Hi, it's a pleasure to be here with you today, and it's only by God's grace that I'm able to share with you God's Word. I hope that God's grace may abound more and more in your life as you see Him working and uh, guiding your path as you walk with Him. Uh, you know, as a father of, um, of children, it's, um, it amazes me to see how each and every one of my child is uniquely made. And they all have different gifts. They're talented in, in different ways. And I wish I can say that I could take credit for the way that they've been brought up. But I know that these are all gifts that God has given them. And so when I look at my oldest child, I, I see how responsible he is. And I see how he loves taking care of his younger siblings. And I see that uh, for him, things need to be logical. And when I look at my second child, I, I see how she's gifted create, in creativity. And she loves to draw. She loves to play music. And I know definitely those are not areas that I have that I've passed on to her. And so as a parent, once I've identified those gifts, you know, I tr we try to strengthen and encourage them to uh, see where, where God takes them and to use it for God's glory. And the same goes for us as believers. God has given us these gifts. And so it's up to us how we use it and how we give it to God uh, for His glory. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is Christ. From Him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. And so Paul is continuing his message on how we need to be a body of Christ united. And in order to do that, uh, he, talks about, he talked about our character and our faith. And now he's talking about how we need to be a church that is united. And so in order to envision that, uh, we have to look at verse 7, where he, we see a shift taking place here. So now Paul is talking about the diversity that exists within this church. And so diversity comes with different and unique gifts that Christ has given to each and every person. Uh, some example of these gifts may be, you know, the fruit of the Spirit, or some may have prophecy or hospitality, teaching, serving, uh, faith, discernment. And their list goes on and on on the different gifts that exist in, for Christians. So this is to encourage all believers to, to discover, develop, and exercise these gifts that God has given us. And so I, I want to encourage you to find out if you don't already know what your spiritual gifts are. And you can simply look online and look up spiritual gift tests. And it'll give you uh, a comprehensive question that you can answer and you can identify, wow, these are some things that are in my life that God has given me that I should use for His kingdom. I know for myself, I didn't know that hospitality was a gift. I didn't even know it existed. And so when I took the test and I saw and I realized that I enjoy inviting people over to my house, you know, encouraging them, praying for them, and laughing and really doing life together, I realized I need to use that 
and to continue to do that for His kingdom. Uh, and so I, I don't encourage you that you know, once you identify those gifts, you, you should also take some time during the week uh, to really work on it. Uh, there's always things that we can do to improve ourselves and improve the gifts that God has given to us. Uh, for instance, if your gift is teaching or creativity, uh, maybe you can take uh, once a week to listen to podcasts or maybe you know, take a class online or go to a class uh, where you can learn about how you can manage and how you can um, make this uh, a bigger part of your life. Uh, and so it's always good to step outside the box and try to see things through a new perspective. And so Christ has gifted each believer and assigned different roles as well. And so it's, it says here in Ephesians chapter 4 that Christ has made some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. And so what are the purpose behind these different roles? And we see that in verse 12. He says, to equip. And so Paul addresses those who are appointed for leadership. They are to train and equip God's people in order to build up the body of Christ. And then in verse 13, he says, to mature. And as we raise up these Christians to become mature, it's so that they can become leaders of the church in the future. And so as we're bringing people to maturity in Christ, it's so that they can be influenced and help to influence others in the same way along the teachings that the Bible has given to us. So one of the things that the church stresses is that, you know, our church stresses is that we should either be teaching or we should be taught. Uh, so there's always this cycle that we should be in. Uh, so that means that we should never be stagnant in our spiritual lives. Uh, so we should be either moving and growing in our faith. Uh, either we're teaching others about the ways of God, or we should be taught through discipleship or through class, through seminary, uh, through different works that it can help us to improve in our spiritual walk with God. And then as Paul concludes this section, he comes back to the image of the body of Christ, of being love. And so all this is done in love. So the unity of the church, the only way this exists is by love. And so just as he began the section in verse 2, in love, and then we see at verse 16, is he concludes that part in love. And so this passage is sandwiched with love. Uh, may that love that we receive from Christ be the source of our unity in our church. You know, let's not be a church that is marked by division, uh, by people who are different, people who only tend to be around others who are similar according to their interests or their desires. Uh, but let's learn to be unified, to cross, to break those walls and, their, and then those barriers so that we can be one in Christ as Jesus intended the church to be. You know, have you ever looked at a piano? Um, maybe perhaps you played it when you're younger. Um, but every year, I remember when I played piano, someone had to come in and tune it. And if you notice, they only carry one tuning fork, and each key had to be tuned to that fork. And I believe that we as Christians, as a church, as a body of Christ, we are all keys to the piano. And we need to be tuned to our spiritual father and source which is God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And so that can only be done as we love one another and as we build on the gifts and the strengths that God has given us. And as that happens, uh, let us see what God, where God takes our church and what He can do through people who are faithful and people who sincerely love each other as Christ loved us. And so let us be that body of Christ that Paul has written in the book of Ephesians. Let us pray for that. Uh, God, we thank you for our time in your word. And we thank you, God, that uh, you saw how important it is for the church to be one. Uh, God, in how we see things, in our not only in our vision, but in terms of our development and how we relate to each other. And so may you take away our pride 
And we ask God that we will learn to see others as you see and view them. So we thank you, God, for your guidance. We thank you for your patience. And we pray for a change that will lead to your glory. And we pray this in your precious Son's name. Amen. This program is 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. 